everyone, welcome to another episode of Get Some. I am your sommelier, Danielle Lindau, and we're gonna do some sipping with some friends. This is my friend, Dan. We have been friends since ugh, 2006. Somewhere uh, in there, yeah. Something about that time. And yeah. uh, Dan actually has been able to enjoy a lot of Get Some, even before it even hit the air, because he lives around the corner from where I film. So him and his family have been able to enjoy some of the wines. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to enjoy them together because there was this crazy thing called COVID. That whole but thing. But I'm just really happy that we get to finally sit and sip together. Me too. Um, and that you guys have been fans from before there was one. So I wanted to get kind of ready for the summertime because Absolutely. it's going to be warm out. We're going to be sitting outside drinking. And one of the first questions you asked me was, what's a way to enjoy red wine in the summertime? So True. I kind of created a little bit of a lineup, but this is you and me getting to finally drink together <laughs> in uh, the days of flip cup and keg stands and that kind of stuff, so. Yeah, we shouldn't play a wine wine pong with these things. These look I mean, we could, it would be a lot of fun. Um, so I wanted to celebrate and um, I like bubbles a lot. So this is actually a Lambrusco from Emilia Romano, Italy. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. So that's why I have the coops, um, cause why not celebrate and feel fancy? I like it. These are fancy. There we go. So Lambrusco is a style of wine that is actually a sparkling red wine. So there's gonna be a lot of berries and like cream notes to this. Um, and with all the bubbles and the zestiness, I was thinking like this would be a fun like barbecue wine. So I was thinking like Red Rock barbecue, the smokiness, the meatiness, but cheers to finally getting to drink together again. Cheers to that. Cheers. Well, some habits don't die. <sighs> oh, I like that. So Lambrusco is a wine that is meant to be enjoyed with food. It's that red wine style, really bubbly and approachable. They do... This winery adds the bubbles after the fermentation process has actually happened where it be turns into wine. Um, but it's easy drinking, it's a lot of fun. Um, Lambrusco should be served just like a red wine in the summertime. Uh, you want it anywhere between like 55 to 65 degrees. And if you want, you can go even colder for it, which is a lot of fun. Um, but this is a great option for bubbles. Red wine in the summertime, you have all that like cherry notes to it, which is kind of fun. Um, it's a bit of like a Michigan cherry bomb, I think. But what do yeah. you think of the Lambrusco? I like it. According to the bottle, I need to learn how to make some suckling pig. But after that, maybe um. before that, I can enjoy it there. I like that. Yeah, the creaminess is good. The bubbles are very fitting for that. It's not kind of one or the other too, yep. too much. One of each. Yeah. But um, since, since you've been a fan, and this is the fun part of 5 to Wine Time, is getting to have a sommelier on demand. Do you have any questions for me about wine itself? I know we've I've had episodes, but um, I can't go into all the details at that time. But certainly, yeah. With um, with a bubbling wine, mm -hmm. uh, what what would you look for in going to the store? This one is good if it's mm -hmm. not available. Something like that. Um, what what would be something that would set it apart from some um, you know Saint? Well, can I can I name drop? You, you can name drop, sure. Something uh, a little better than some sparkling grape juice that I would have grown up drinking. Oh, like Welch's? Something like something that. Something better than Welch's. So on the back of the label, one, there'll be an alcohol content. So that makes it already better than sparkling grape juice. <laughs> um, but 11% is where, with Lambrusco's, they have dry, semi-dry, and then they even make a sweet one. So anything above about 8% alcohol is going to be more on the drier side. So this is more of your dry red wine style. Uh, Lambrusco is the name of the grape varietals. Uh, you can look for a sparkling red wine from Italy. So this should be in a lot of stores near like your Prosecco's, since it is in the French Accortas, that is that whole Italian region. This is kind of near the Chianti side. So in that just south of the Piedmont, not quite towards the heel of the boot. Mm -hmm. um, but Lambrusco's are really good. You can also go with sparkling Shiraz's. Um, if you want more of that champagne style, but not at the champagne cost, I go to Spain a lot because cavas are really affordable and approachable, but they still do the same methods as champagne. Um, that's kind of my go-to in my fridge when I don't have the budget for champagne is cava. 
but I think lambrusco is a good easy food. You could even do this with lasagna or some sort of Italian meat sauce, something that has some like a licorice or it has like star anise notes to it. So even spicy like Indian food to a BYOB. I think lambrusco would be kind of a fun one to pair with. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah I'll have to learn how to cook as long, along with learning more about wine. Season three, cooking with a psalm. <laughs> I know we have done wines in the past before that are Malbecs, and you really enjoyed those. Mm -hmm. um, I got that late night text message of, this one's really good. <laughs> um, and so I wanted to do something that may be a little bit similar, uh, familiar for you, sure. but in a different method. So this is actually a Malbec in a can, which is kind of cool because the world of wine is now going into that traveling, especially after the pandemic. Everyone's drinking outside, mm -hmm. everyone's going to festivals, and people really want a good value wine um, in a can instead of, you know, the, the basics of in a plastic cup and right. is sweet. There is this huge movement of doing more canned wines because it's eco, like it's economical in the sense of it doesn't weigh as much as a bottle of wine, so you can ship more. Like these guys come in a 24 pack, which equals about four bottles of wine. So it's single serving aspect. And you don't have to worry about the cork, which is where a lot of flaws are made in when it comes to wines, and also the, the cost of the bottle. So aluminum is a lot cheaper than glass. You have so many easy, and it's fresh. You don't have to worry about it getting light sensitive or getting mm -hmm. cooked in the bottle or anything like that. And when you're, you know, walking around, it just kind of <laughs> looks like an energy drink. No one has to know. So I wanted to show you how canned wine can be good wine. Um, because the seltzer world has really taken off and mm -hmm. there, everyone's making a hard seltzer. Now there are wine spritzers, but red wines, it did take a little bit of time to figure out how to make it right and do it right. But I really think that Archer Roos, which is coming from Argentina, they are an organic practices, really high elevation, but it's still that deep, dark inkiness that we like about Malbec, but... I wanted to show it in like a single serve style. Yeah. I'm excited to try this because I spend a lot of time floating down the river and mm -hmm. saw, I think for the first time last year, some different canned wines and thought it was another seltzer or something, but people uh, were drinking the some, some good wines. So I'm excited to try I, something like that. It's one of the new things that's in the wine world that I'm really excited about. I've had some like Cabernet Sauvignons in a cab mm -hmm. and Merlots in a cab. Um, there is a rosé that you'll be taking home um, that's in a can too because why not take some wine home with you that we why haven't not? tried before so then you can report back to me. But um, I forgot the alcohol content on this guy. But like there's a moose on it. How can you be mad? At 13.5 alcohol, you're looking at almost the same amount of alcohol as three Bud Lights, almost. <laughs> if you think about it that way, it's three Bud Lights in a can and it's a lot easier. Um, you how and many, I didn't get to do- How many hams is that? Hmm? How many hams is that? Classic mm, lagers. How many hams? Maybe four. Maybe four or five hams. <laughs> I think almost a whole 30 pack of Dirty 30s for sure. But it's 250 milliliters, so it's just a little over um, a split level of like champagne. So you're at about three glasses in a can. So um, definitely an easy sipper or chugger. Um, I don't know if I would shotgun the, this with you. Um, it'd be a little messy. I don't think I would with me either. Mm -mm. There were too many nights when we would do too many shotguns on <laughs> patios. But cheers to a mall back in a can. <laughs> I still do it like it's a shot. But while he's sipping, there's still those like dark cocoa nib notes, the blueberry, almost a meaty note to it, which is kind of cool. I like that texture a lot. It do, like it's really too. smooth. Yeah, that's very smooth. Yeah, that would be dangerous. I'm really glad I'm sharing this with you because I probably would drink it straight out of the can. And I, there's no law against drinking and tubing, so... Mm. Well, maybe in public, but what can for, you do? For those who don't know what tubing is, tubing is when you get a bunch of friends together and you pretty much raft down the river and the whole objective is to empty out the cooler by the time you get down to your other spot. Um, so it's a bunch of friends chilling down the river, having a good time, lots of laughs, um, a lot of sunburn, 
and um, usually you have a cooler in the middle and you all kind of float back and forth between the coolers and you're just drinking your way down, which is a lot of fun. Um, I've done it in Michigan and uh, you can do it in Arizona as well. Just wear a lot more sunscreen. I became a lobster Ooh. tail. Yeah. I was a lobster. It was like June. I was like, That's it's tough. fun. The water was cold. I didn't even know I was sunburnt until I got home and I was like, hmm. And the lobster. best part is everybody on the river is friends. Yep, you make more friends. I think I am still in contact with some of the people that we have rivered with before. Nice. And that was like, what, it's 2022 now, so 10 years ago. Wow. Yeah, nice. that was before I moved to Chicago was our last tubing. You must have had some good wine. <laughs> I don't think I was drinking wine then. I was the jello shot queen back then. But easy going nice and light mm -hmm. it's definitely a purse wine because you can put it in your purse and nobody knows um but i i like it it's kind of bring back cargo do. shorts <gasps> if you do i'll, I'll wear them with you All as right, long good. as we don't go towards like overalls i don't think i could ever do overalls again i only did that at the habitat for humanity the town in miami and i was like why did i go to walmart and buy overalls there's no reason and why did you wear overalls in miami Ohio or Florida? Florida. Oh, okay. So it kind of worked a little bit more. Yeah, I don't know. But easy drinking. I like it. It's It doesn't feel that high in alcohol, which I think no. is almost dangerous about it. Could be dangerous if you have a couple of those on the, on the river or the barbecue. Or the barbecue. Mm -hmm. You can put it in the coolers. Um, just like the Lambrusco, I put this wine in the fridge. Red wines, yes, they say drink at room temperature, but they're talking about cellar room temperature, which the wine cellar is anywhere between that 55 to 65 degrees. It's nice, it's cool, and that makes the wine not only feel balanced in the mouth, but it doesn't make the alcohol feel hot and racy because if you drink hot red wine at a barbecue, you're just going to feel the alcohol burn because right. everything else is kind of muted. But if you drink it at the right temperature, and like this can get a little bit warmer and it'll open up more, but temperature does, excuse me, temperature does make a difference when it comes to drinking wine. Red, white, sparkling, rosé, even fortified wines, you have to drink at the right temperature to really get their true expression. So it's kind of like when you do an interview, you're nervous at the very beginning, but by the end, you're just really good to go. <laughs> well, so, if interviews had a couple of glasses of wine in between, I think I'd get any job in the world. Hmm. I would go back for a second interview, even if they didn't invite me to the second interview. <laughs> Be like, oh, are we going to drink that thing again? But what other questions? I mean, you've, you've watched almost every episode. And what questions in the wine world? I know it's a little bit crazy and it's always changing, but. Are there, are there companies to look for or to avoid with, um, jumping on the bandwagon of wines? Are there companies that have uh, figured out canned wines and mm -hmm. others who are just putting wine in a can and maybe not getting the same results? Um, I have tasted some canned wine that I'm just like, oh, I see where you were going with it. Mm -hmm. um, it was a, they tried to do a tropical spritzer wine. So I think that in the wine world, I, you got to stick to what works. Mm -hmm. Like, Sauvignon Blanc would do great. Rosés would do great. Cabs are finally figuring out. But at the very beginning of the can, like hard seltzer movement, I was mm -hmm. seeing a lot of like spritzers in a can. And it didn't really taste like wine. It tasted more like fruit juice that added alcohol at the end. And I was just like, I get where you're going with this. Because that was before even the cocktail in a can movement was. So it was kind of that in-between of like growing phases of like puberty where you're like, this is awkward. <laughs> And it tasted awkward. Um, I'm glad that they didn't continue that mm -hmm. or where I was working just was like, you know what? This isn't really moving that well. But it's all about trial and error, right. I think. And it, it is part of the fun part of the world of wine is you can make wine. Does it always mean it's always good wine? But it maybe not to me, but there's always a wine for everybody. Mm -hmm. So there was wines in the can movement that were sweeter at the beginning. So I'm happy to see the drier movement of like this Malbec and seeing Pinot Grigios and dry rosés in a can, I think is really where the money's at because in the summertime, who doesn't drink rosé? Yeah. So. Well, I'm glad I'm learning about it now instead of while they now were still figuring it out because it's like hybrid oh, cars. So you don't 
you don't want the first generation of those when they're mm -hmm. still figuring it out. So I'm glad they took their time before. Yeah, they've been working on this CAN project for over three years before it even made it to the American market. So trial and error definitely matters and seen with carbonation. Um, I know that there were a bunch of exploding cans of wine at the very beginning because they were trying to add sulfur to preserve it oh. and then um, to keep the wine fresh. But then with expansion and in aluminum, it, it didn't go so well. It sounds like it. I was just like, ah, it's a cocktail of a problem. But um, I, I'm excited to see where it goes. A variety packs, it's a great, great way to introduce people to wines. During the pandemic, I was doing a lot of Zoom samples, um, tastings. Mm -hmm. So I would drop off packages to people's homes and then we would taste as we go and I had to have the proper seal and everything. So then once the canned wine movement and small portions came out, I was like, okay, this is great because this is a half bottle of wine. This is a canned wine. We can experiment and it traveled easier and it was lighter. So I think that half bottle servings and aluminum cans are going to stick around. Um, we're even seeing more and more wineries going with screw caps because they're being more eco-conscious and not cutting down trees and being worried about the environment because mm -hmm. cork only comes from Portugal. So that shipment and that carbon footprint of paying for corks with your label on it, then being shipped to you, people are being more and more eco-conscious and going towards the aluminum movement. So, Have you seen pushback on the aluminum can movement like there was with the screw tops where people are thinking, oh, screw tops, that's not fancy yes definitely especially even myself as a psalm i'm like canned wine are we really mm -hmm. going down that route but when you see that there's that much passion going into a canned wine as there is into a bottle of wine mm -hmm. and the thought process is there you can still taste the art of the wine itself um, there are even wineries that are making hundreds and hundreds of dollars of bottles of wine that are using screw caps now because they're realizing people may sell her these wines for 10, 20, 30 years, and you don't know that that wine is flawed until you pull the cork out. Putting an aluminum twist-off cap on it cuts out the oxidation issues, cuts out what is called TCA, which is one of the flaws that makes a wine smell like a wet dog when it's not supposed to. So they're, they're playing and they're experimenting, and I think that we're trying to break the stereotypes just like how... I like to break the stereotype that all Merlot is bad because of Sideways. <laughs> and because Sideways definitely did a number on the Merlot market. But I love showing people that Merlot is a delicious wine and that I think screw caps and synthetic corks are kind of the route that it's going to happen. And it's going to take time for people to get comfortable with it. But once they realize that just because something doesn't have a cork or it's not in a bottle, that the quality is going down, I think that will make the world a difference. But once they just open up a can and try it i think that'll be also trial and error it's a fun game to do i'm excited to try, to try and air in the world of wine any final questions for your phone a friend i know i know you text me questions Ooh. all the time <laughs> of like hey what should i drink with this so this uh, this is your your final what is it from who um who wants to be a millionaire phone a friend or lifeline yeah so your last lifeline of the sipping with friends, what what questions do you have? What's the hell? Um, let me think. Did you already mention? Are there types of wines that would be better than others in a can? As far as like a Malbec as opposed to something else. Um, I. Being that I haven't been on the side of winemaking mm -hmm. yet, I think that like Malbecs or Gamays or light body wines will do better in cans. Because like Cabernet Sauvignons and Syrahs and anything that's like kind of Rhone varietal, big mm -hmm. bold, like Shirazes and that kind of stuff, I feel like they still need that oak and they need that surface space of a bottle when it's aging to kind of calm down. Yeah. And there's so much more tannins. I think when it's a light, young, youthful red wine, I think that'll do better in a can. I think white wines will do great, uh, already do great in cans. Kim Crawford is already on the can movement. I'm seeing Pinot Grigios in cans. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing even sparkling in cans too. Um, Underwood from Oregon has a whole line of wines that are in cans. They have a Pinot Noir, they have a Rosé, a sparkling Rosé. Um, so they're really on that movement of single servings and that's the way to go. And I think just like they have done, it's, it's about 
light, easy drinking, want to mm-hmm. drink now wines. I don't know if every cab is meant to be in a can. So I've, this sounds perfect for me, somebody looking for a summer red that mm-hmm. is light and outdoorsy, then I mean, it has a perfect. moose on it. It has outdoorsy. a moose. Moose goes with rivers and yeah, light, mm-hmm. light drinking, portable, all that. I'll send you a couple cans. Sounds good. Deal. So right. thank you, Dan, for joining me on some thank sipping so with some much. friends. Um, as, as I've said, thank you for your friendship, for your support. And now thank you for coming and drinking with me. So thanks for it's, being part of sipping with friends. It's been a lot better than drinking high life in frat houses. Upgrades. It happens. And perfect. Cut. Wait, we got it. Woohoo. Good job. Cool. Now we get to hang out. <laughs>